Good day and welcome to World Maritime Day. It's a celebration that is ongoing in Ghana and throughout the world right now. And so with me, of course, is a very special guest. Her name is Miss Tandai McAllister. She is the Director of Legal Services at the uh, Maritime Administration Department, otherwise known as MARAD. And so Miss McAllister, I thank you so much for speaking with us today as we go through some of what uh, is basically falls under you, you know, your um, particular department at Marit. So welcome again and thank you for being here. Well, thank you so much, Felicia, and thank you for having me. I am especially uh, happy that, you know, DPI and NCN, you've taken some time out to recognize World Maritime Day 2021, um, especially um, as we are still living <laughs> through a pandemic. <laughs> yes. And this year's theme is quite um, uh, central, central to, exactly. to the pandemic and, yes. and it underscores a lot of the challenges that uh, the shipping industry has experienced um, and more so the seafarers. And yes. So this year, um, I'll just preempt you, this year <laughs> yes, we okay. are giving recognition to, to seafarers yes, um, at the core of shipping's future. In fact, they're at the core of shipping now. Yeah. 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 All right, so me, I can tell anybody, I am not too familiar with the maritime department. And I'm saying this because it's the truth. And so it's a representation of most people in Ghana. We know about Marit, so we automatically think, uh, you know, water, we think uh, shipping and stuff like that. And so I wanted to begin there. What primarily uh, Marit does? What is its responsibility? Well, let me first tell you what ab about the, the maritime industry itself. Yes. And the maritime industry sits on principally four pillars. There is maritime labor, um, which concerns the welfare and health and, and wellness and well-being and, and so on of seafarers. Yes. Um, there is the environmental protection um, element of maritime operations because we know with ships traversing the world's oceans and seas there there will be pollution and and um and so there are mechanisms in place to regulate prevent uh, or even punish for pollution or pollution incidents and then there is again um on the seafarer front standards of training and certification and watch keeping okay. and then there is for shipping itself, the element of safety of ships and uh, ensuring that there is safe and secure shipping. So what MARA does as the national regulator for the maritime industry is sort of regulate the or uh, administer the legislation that are implemented in order that the, those four pillars of the international maritime sector are well represented in Guyana and that we ensure that our industry is functional and that we implement the international best practices as recognized and that the shipping industry remains competitive, that shipping is safe and secure and that in, in all of that, the development of Guyana is at the forefront. So we, uh, you mentioned the word competitive, but before we get to competitive, let me just ask you our own uh, Maritime Act. Is it up to par with international standards? Obviously? The Shipping Act was created, was promulgated in 1998, and it has incorporated the principles of the conventions to which Guyana was at the time party. Is it an updated piece of legislation given um, all of the activities that we have now? There is uh, some work to be done, but it is a piece of legislation that represents um, to a great extent those four pillars which I just outlined to you. And so there are provisions in our legislation, as it is, to cater 
for the proper um, operationalization and regulation of the industry. But yes, there is, and, and in fact, it is on government's agenda, um, on its active agenda, for the updating and consolidation of our legislation relative to the shipping or maritime sector. So oh, that is so a work, work in progress. progress. All right, thank you so much. All right, so as we zone into your particular department, I know that um, as a very important agency, um, a lot of, a lot, as we indicated before, what I said is unknown about this department. And so I wanted you to tell me basically the significance of MARIT. And um, again, we're going back to what it's empowered to do. And since you've joined the department, what are some of the changes that would have been implemented and so on? Not necessarily under you, but uh, uh, maybe in the last 10 years or so. Well, I can speak for the last <laughs> five years <laughs> yes. with much confidence. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. All right, let's take it there. So, as, as I've alluded to earlier, uh, Marat is the principal regulator of our local maritime sector. We are responsible for the ensuring of the safety and health of our seafarers, meaning Guyanese seafarers and foreign seafarers who work on board Guyana ships. Be responsible for the registration and licensing of ships. Uh, be responsible for setting the standards for training and watchkeeping for seafarers. And we also work to ensure that there is prevention mechanism for of pollution in the marine environment. The agency works closely with several other um, public sector agencies, including Fisheries Department. Uh, we work closely with the Environmental Protection, uh, Transport and Harbors Department, the Coast Guard, Ghana Defense Force Coast Guard, the Marine Police, the Ghana Fire Service, because we also have some responsibility for search and rescue um, in our maritime space. We work closely with the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, which administers the Maritime Zones Act. And so, and we have also the responsibility for the maintenance of our harbors and the ship's channel, and for ensuring that um, they are properly marked and uh, that we have prevention mechanism in place for, for accidents. Um, we do investigation of marine accidents and casualties. And so, you know, it's a wide range of activities and, and there are provisions in the Shipping Act and there are other pieces of legislative instruments um, related to the maritime sector that MARID has overall responsibility to, to administer. Mm -hmm. I know uh, when we talk legal issues, sometimes it goes over the head uh, of people and so on. And a particular question that I wanted to ask you is a follow-up question. What part uh, would Marit had played in terms of, you, you talk about, uh, you didn't say demarcation, but that's a word that keeps coming to mind for some reason. But in terms of ensuring that you do proper markings and stuff like that, what part would that have played as the country would have dealt with the Venezuela uh, border issue? Um, if you can maybe bring it down to my level so I can understand. Well, <laughs> I will try to say. <laughs> um, border and boundary issues uh, is, is not our specialty oh, per okay. se. That is the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. But we have a, a a section that deals with hydrography and, uh, and, and markings and so on. And so MARID would lend support in, in that regard to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs as it addresses border issues. It's, it's not an, an issue that we are principally concerned with, but as a support entity, there is data and other information that we would gather um, to give support to foreign affairs. 
Exactly. Yeah, so as it represents <laughs> Diana's interest. <laughs> Lovely. Well, that, that was for my information. And so if you're now joining us, of course, we're discussing World Maritime Day. And we're having a discussion with Ms. Tandai McAllister. And she, of course, is the Director of Legal Services at MARAD. And so uh, thank you for that. I, we, As you spoke about labor uh, earlier on, I wanted to ask you about that in terms of uh, we... Mara did not escape the pandemic. We are <laughs> in the pandemic in a sense, and so all of us have had to deal with that. So how has the department been managing from a legal perspective in the area of labor, uh, taking into consideration that you would have had to make several changes and this would have involved the legal department? Okay. Well, I'm happy you asked that question and, and it also um, brings me to answering a follow-up question you had earlier on some of the changes that I've, I myself have witnessed um, over the time that I've been there and, and you know what development is really yeah. taking place but just as you're in on the pandemic and what we have had to put in place um, as it regards labor and welfare and health of our seafarers um, because when we talk about maritime labor it's really about those men and women who sacrifice their their time, they sacrifice a social, an active social life to be on board vessels, <laughs> um, traversing our seas and our oceans in order to bring goods and, and some services um, to us. And so the pandemic really did a number on the maritime sector, as you can well imagine. And we've had challenges with crew changes, um, there are challenges uh, with, you know, people falling ill on board ships. Uh, we, the world has seen challenges, and even us, with abandonment of, of seafarers. Um, yeah, because everything has an impact on everything else. And so even as the as economies would have collapsed and, and businesses went in the red, maybe, um, you know, persons, ship owners, unable to pay seafarers, unable to pay the crew of vessels, and so some up to abandon seafarers. Um, in terms of what we have done as, as a, the regulatory agency, we have held the call of the IMO, the International Maritime Organization, to designate um, seafarers as key workers. Okay. And so there has been a prioritization of seafaring and a recognition that seafarers are also on the front line um, bringing services and, and commodities to us and they too are risking their lives in so doing and so in recognizing that these are key workers we, we did put um, some of our processes for them in a band so the um, in terms of the, when the seamen's book, the seafarer's book would, would, would expire, you know, there, there was a period of, of sort of moratorium yeah. that, you know, they, they still get to work, although they're unable to, to renew, renew that. Um, and we have since appointed a designated officer, she's a registrar of seafarers and our training and certification officer in the person of Ms. Katina Ben-George. And so she deals primarily with seafarer issues. Seafarers have a, a direct contact with the Maritime Administration to have all of their issues resolved um, as best as we are able to. The Bill of Rights, the International Bill of Rights as we call it for seafarers is a convention known as the Maritime Labor Convention. Um, Ghana is not yet party to the Maritime Labor Convention. The Maritime Labor Convention is a consolidation of, uh, I believe, 36 conventions and one protocol. And conventions which were um, developed uh, between 1922, I believe, and 1996. But Ghana is party to those conventions. Okay. And so, <laughs> so there, there are 36 <laughs> instruments and one um, 36 conventions and one protocol that were consolidated oh. to form this one maritime labor convention and there was some updating to it and so on and you know to give it currency and so the principles 
um, underlining the Maritime Labor Convention, which are contained in those, the predecessor instruments, Ghana is party to. Okay. So we're, we mean, we're not party to the MLC, but that does not mean that we are not empowered okay. to implement the provisions that are contained in the MLC because the very provisions are contained in those instruments to which we are party. And those instruments are reflected in our shipping act. We continue our conversation today with Ms. McAllister. We're talking about World Maritime Day, obviously. And so I, my next question for you would be, uh, so we have, there's been a lot of advancement in shipping technology. And so I wanted to know how MARD has been able to keep up with those particular changes. Well, I'm, I'm glad you answered that question. And, and yes, <laughs> the law. <laughs> <laughs> the maritime environment is, is, is changing every day and, and um, just as there are, as you rightly pointed out, advanced technological changes, the law changes in order to keep up um, with the changes in the maritime environment. And uh, MARAD, in fact Guyana, um, recently uh, the administration has um, given recognition to the important role that the Maritime Administration Department has to play um, in Guyana's development. And there has been, I believe, an appointment of a permanent representative to the International Maritime Organization. And in fact, even before we got to this point, we have seen um, over the past year a, an increase in Guyana's uh, present and representation at uh, the level of the International Maritime Organization. <coughs> and so we are able to keep abreast with the legislative changes um, that occur. And um, we have um, officers who would attend meetings of the IMO, the technical cooperation meetings, meetings on maritime safety, um, meetings on legislative changes and um, environment protection. And so there are several committees of the IMO and GAN is represented at all those meetings. In fact, we will um, be attending the, I believe it's the 104th session of the Maritime Safety Committee meeting next week. In addition to that, we have also seen increased participation in the um, Caribbean Memorandum of understanding on maritime on the maritime sector uh, we will again uh, attend the CMOU meeting which starts I believe next Monday and we have um, a number of training um, through technical cooperation and otherwise a number of opportunities for training that we have taken advantage of and so there has been a lot of capacity building and, and um, knowledge sharing and development of our um, employees. Like I told we've had that, uh, we've had Miss Ben George appointed and so she is keeping abreast with all of the, the changes um, relative to, to, to seafarer issues uh, so that she can you know, offer that form representation on behalf of, of the Maritime Administration and Guyana. And we have a registrar of ships. She's responsible in Mrs. Gail Colley Green. She's responsible for ship registration. And she too, um, you know, she keeps abreast with, <laughs> with all of the changes. Um, there has been um, opportunities for us to do um, training in port state control so that you know we can have uh, some measures of, of um, surveying of an, an inspection of ships calling um, at our ports. We have um, officers who are designated inspectors of shipping, and they are challenged to with, with they're charged sorry with keeping abreast with those changes. Um, and so it is. Um, it has been quite a lot for us it, and, and we anticipate that um, the volume of work, the volume of responsibility will increase, but it has been um, quite an interesting and, and quite an enjoyable <laughs> journey. <laughs> and um, the fact that I believe what has been quite helpful 
is that uh, <laughs> the fact that we have a director general who is himself a former seafarer yeah. and former director of maritime safety, having a very good understanding of the sector and where we need to be, where we need to be, um, that has made it quite easier for, for him to represent to the administration and that, you know, what has to be done in order for us to advance the sector in the interest of a country's development and growth. And I must say, I am pleased to say that I believe that the representation um, has borne a lot of fruit and we, we have seen, you know, good reception and I am convinced that you will see um, a lot of expansion in the maritime sector and maybe the next time we are having this conversation <laughs> we will not have to introduce Marad and to say <laughs> what we do yes. because you know we will become a household name. Well, I, I thank you so much uh, Ms. McAllister Tandai. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm happy that we were able to have this conversation because usually legal issues would go over uh, my head and, and that would be for a lot of people as well and you have been able to uh, explain to us and, and tell us a lot about what happens in the department and the advancement uh, that have happened uh, in the last five years or so and so I want to say thank you for speaking with us and you know as the director of legal services as a female and I know that you have had the department itself has a, a few female holding key positions and I must say uh, congratulations to the director as well uh, for that so I hope we have this conversation again and for the uh, seafarers at the core of uh, shipping's future as the theme for this year's World Maritime Day. I, I do hope that you continue the way you have and uh, you know we continue to look out for our men and women at sea. So thank you again and do you have any last uh, parting words for us before well, we thank go? Thank you very much Felicia. <laughs> no, I'm happy that I've been able to provide some clarity. Um, as you would recognize, there is a lot to share about the work we do and uh, how important Marad is to the national economy. And um, yes, we do have a lot of women at the core of the Maritime Administration Department, um, a lot of qualified women. And I, I, you know, it, just to wrap up, it, it really is a reflection of the changing of the nomenclature from seamen to seafarers yes. and because maritime is, is and shipping itself is a traditionally male dominated sector um, but we are happy that you know as women we can be a part of, of this dynamic sector and to bring positive changes and there, there you will see uh, a lot more um, being featured about the maritime sector and the work that that we do at the department um, there is a lot a lot on the legislative agenda time does not permit us to have uh, the yes. conversation about you know what really um, we will see as, as 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 the sector evolves but i am um, like i said earlier i'm quite confident that over the next two or three years uh, they will we will see a vast transformation of the our local maritime sector. Ms. McAllister and our viewers, thank, thank you so, so much, much for joining us.